9, 28. Let's not forget we have come for training for three months. And when you come for training, you need viral, you need jota, and you need to open your heart and ears. Want everybody to get ready their, your writing material. A wise man said, the sharpest brain cannot store information the way writing material will store it. So which means that writing material is, is more safe than the sharpest brain. That's why you need to learn to write. You might come across whatsoever you write in the next 20 years and to bless you again. So with your writing material, we are in the school now. All our members, we are going to be in school for three months. Oh yeah, wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it, wave it. In name, you will here. Wave it, wave it. I'm looking at you, Sister Smart. Wave it. <laughs> it is well. God bless you. Put it down. So write the topic: securing your future. Securing your future. First Chronicles twenty nine twenty eight. But I think I didn't see your daughter. Wave it. Okay. So I don't think I did not see you. First Chronicles twenty nine twenty eight. Now let's be on our feet. This is the kind of future that I'm talking about. You will all get there. Now look at this future. I say you will get there. Say, I will get there. Now, let's be on our feet. Let's read it together. I love this. This is where God wants to take us to. After the count of three, we are going to read. One, two, I'm waiting for you to rise. And three. Let's go. So he died in a good old age. Full of days and riches and honor, and Solomon, his son, reigned in his place. Remain standing. Look at this future. The Bible says, number one, he died at a good old age. Odagba, Odarugo, Kotoku, one, two, full of days. Yeah, he lived long. Three, and riches. And honor. Ibatomaku a ola ati yi. Oshi walowe. And look at the next last one. And his son, and Solomon his son, reigned in his place. Otuari omo fa awon ola iyi ati kuyene lowo. That will be your portion. If we are talking of a future, future, there is no future better than this. You grow up and you didn't die young. You die at a good age. At a time when even if your children cry, they will only be crying because, ah, and we miss mommy, we miss daddy. Ah, and the mommy is grandpa. Not that, ah, 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 iku, 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 ah, iku, she that down. You know, this kind of death is a kind of death that after they have buried the person, they will dance to church for Thanksgiving. That's the kind of death you will die. The Bible says, and he had riches and honor. You will not die poor. Yes. I cast out of your life every spirit of poverty and dishonor in the name of Jesus. Yes. Ah, and this one I love most. And Solomon is son. Elumi, near Arugbo Joe, a kuntu mama sunipe. Ah, ah, Olo Masha, no mimi mamanta on my mawa ya. Because when we come back in Dao Kiaduru, they can't die. Pataru, he can't want to go away. Ah, get get on long alone. But look at what he had a son to say. This is my son. In the name of Jesus, the corrupter will not corrupt your children. Amen. You didn't hear me. I say your children will not be corrupt. Amen. This morning I was reading on the internet. One great servant of God was writing, "My second born, my second son." So, so and so has become uh, a sailor in America just this morning. He graduated from the, the military school as a sailor. I pray for you. Your children will not bring shame 
or disgrace to you in the name of Jesus. Your children will be great. I say your children will be great in the land of the living in the name of Jesus. Everyone trusting God for children, God will say to you, the God that gave David this kind of end will say to you with good children. Every pregnant woman you will deliver safely in the name of Jesus. It is well with you in Jesus' name of prayer. Now be seated. Let's now look at how Solomon, I mean, Psalms, uh, David got to this point. Now, securing your future, you know, I said I'll be teaching you on things to do that will make you not to have problem in the future. Things to do that will make uh, uh, you not to have something that will be chasing you in your future to bring you down. Some people have lived their life in such a way that the law of seed time and harvest is going to still bring them down in the future. That's why you must learn today. With all the messages this morning, we are going to learn from David. Hallelujah. And we'll continue next week to upper week for three months. Amen? Now, let's look at the things that David did. How did he get to this point? That at his old age, he was still wealthy. At his old age, he still had honor. At his old age, he had a child to hand over uh, uh, the, his, you know, his wealth, honor, and greatness to. And he died at the age that even his children celebrated him. Let us look at them. We are going to take them one after the other. Let's take number one. Now, in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 1, we'll, they'll put it on screen very soon. David served God so well to the point that God had to mention him by name before his prophet Samuel. Write that point down. David served God so well to the point that God had to mention him by name before his servant Samuel. I read, now the Lord said to Samuel, how long will you mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and go. I am sending you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided myself a king among his son. I have provided myself a king among his son. I have provided myself a king among his I have provided myself a king. Listen, they, nobody knew David as at when God mentioned him to Samuel. Now, I'm going to be comparing David with today's kind of Christian. Now, David was a kind of a believer that in his days of serving God, he was serving God privately until God had to go and mention him to the prophet. But today's Christian. Now, if you look at the life of today's Christian, they want the prophet to know them, not for God to know them. So they are not serving God for God to know them. They are serving God for prophet to see. That's the difference. Now, today's Christians want to pick up an assignment that will make pastor to see them, that will make pastor to hail them, that will make pastor to praise them. A pastor will be saying, yes, 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 yes. You are doing... Listen, pastor can know you. God may not know you. And it is not pastor knowing you that is important to you. Ah, it's not pastor knowing you. It is God that sees in secret, eh? that knows what others don't know that is important. After all, Samuel did not know David. David has only been hearing. Ah, Samuel, ah, there's one prophet, Samuel. Ah, Wuli Agba, Samuel, Wuli Agba. And one day, imagine, Samuel just knock your house, just as you are now. Now, our own Samuel in Nigeria is Pastor Yia Adeboe. We all know. Hallelujah. Anointing has class. Anointing has grade. Can you imagine if Pastor Adeboe just drives into your house right now and knock your door? Co, 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 co. Co, 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 co. And they say, who are you looking for? He said, I'm looking for Christiana Fate. Won't you be shocked? Ah, uh ah. -uh. Daddy will let him know. Can God not do it? He can do it. But what we make God to do it, hear me, is your private life of commitments to serving God. How are you serving God? That was the foundation David laid. I wrote here, today's generation want to pretend to the pastor 
so that the pastor there, so that the pastor can mention them to God. So the pastor will be the one saying, God, have you considered? Oh God, have you considered? Oh God, this sister is very good in our church. Oh God, oh God, oh God. You know, when Samuel entered the house of Jesse, the first man he saw was Eliab. Have he? As he saw Eliab, Eliab had everything physically to make him king. But the statement of God touched me. God didn't say I didn't choose him. God said, I have rejected him. Which means that he has been chosen before. You can't reject something that was not presented to you. Hello? If something is not given to you, will you it means that there have been a mentioning before. Ah, Eliab, Eliab, Eliab. But Eliab must have done something nobody knew. But he knows that made God to say, Rala, Rala, I have rejected him. How are you serving God? Now, I read a story. No, I didn't read it. I watched it. The late uh, Paul Yongo Chiu, you know, he pastors the largest church in the world as at that time when he was alive. He has one elder in his church. The wife was a dickness in the church. The brother was an elder. Now, listen. This young lady, this elder uh, dickness, was sick and she died. But because her husband loved her so much, after her death, the husband fell sick. He couldn't take it anymore. He was always crying, my wife, I love my wife. I can't cope without my wife. In the process of falling sick, his pressure, blood pressure went high. He himself died. Now, Paul Yongo Cho said they were preparing for his burial. They have already buried the wife. And after some time, he fell sick. He himself died. On the day they were to bury him, they have laid him beside the grave. The, the grave had been dug, prepared. They only called pastor to come and pray. You know, and talk to people, use that as a source of evangelism. So, be the pastor saying, Badua, Tumba, when your sorrow, on real, elder Lagbaja, on Lati Tessile, you want to walk on Jokon. While he was praying, he was preaching, two, like two minutes to the end of the message, the brother sneezed <laughs> and woke up. Ah, everybody screamed. They've embalmed him. How come? How come? And as he opened his eyes, he was crying. They now ask him, why? What happened? He said, I saw my wife. That they were taking me on a journey. The day I died, I was being taken by an angel into a journey. As we were going from place to place, place to place, the angel took me to one place. Very beautiful place. Ah, he said, the place is so big, so beautiful. He said, then my wife came out of the house. He said, I was happy about dancing. He said, the angel said, wait, I brought you here. For two reasons. The first reason why I brought you here is to show you the reward of your wife where she is now. Then he saw the place very big, very beautiful. And I said, Go back and tell them in the world. Your wife was not the pastor of the church. Okay, pastor of church. Your wife was not even in any ministerial place. The only work the woman was doing in the church is that she offered her house. Anytime they have a traveling missionary or a minister that came to their church to preach, she will lift up her hand and say to the pastor, Please, sir, may I house the pastor? Don't waste money for hotel. I prepared a special place. May I house the pastor? Feed the pastor? Take care of the pastor till the pastor will leave. That was the only thing she was doing in church. And nobody thought she was working. Then anytime she comes to church, she gets to church earlier than everyone. You know what she will do? She will go to the toilet. She will wash all the toilets. That was what she was doing every service day. And God said, because she was doing this, taking care. I, didn't, I myself didn't even know that such a assignment can be rewarded. Because she was taking care of the toilets every day and taking care of my servants. This is a reward. Ah, He said, he now asked the Lord. Where is my only world? I am an elder in the church. I travel for evangelism, ministrations always. He said the Lord laughed. The Lord showed him a place. Ah. He said this place is not as beautiful. It's not as beautiful. I'm always, I'm always around in the administrative setup of the church. He said your wife's work is rated higher than yours. As the angel finished talking, his wife came out. He said he was happy. He wanted to go and walk her. The wife said, I only received permission to come and tell you 
that where I am is more better than where you are. You have work to do on that. I have gone. I am no longer coming back. The children are there. If they allow you to stay here, the children will be affected. I only come, came to tell you that you should go back. Stop missing me. I'm enjoying myself where I am. He said, while he said, no, I'm not going back. The angel just touched him and he woke up. He saw that they were about to bury him. Imagine. That's why you must serve God like David. A guru foundation to David lay. Koseni to mo, but alone mo. I want to come my jacket alone mo, elu yeko ma she. So that kiwa hala to de alone from elu masoke omo mini o, omo mini mo mo, mo mo. She mo ke I want come, want wa alone, I want come alone ungu o. There are some that say uluwa, uluwa, uluwa mo ungu e, I want come alone so kuma worry, twenty four seven. What can make you to have this kind of foundation? Serve God in your private life. Don't be a private, a private life devil and a church sister. You know, there are some people like that. In their private, they are devils. But in church, they are saints. If you live like that, God will not know you. Please take note of this point very well. The pastor knowing you is not as important as God knowing you. I come again. The pastor knowing you is not as important as God knowing you. If you are very faithful in your service to God, he will reveal you in important places. If you are very faithful in your service to God, he will reveal you in important places. Just the same way he revealed David to Samuel. David didn't struggle for the position. Could be anybody, ja. In fact, ki she bulu gbe wole. Wole ko oruko e. Ma lo le jese. E ni kan wa nwa an mo e. Ti ma fi choba. There are several things I need on on a, there was a day I was in, in the office. I needed some amount of money. I was just sitting in my office and somebody walked in. The person said, "Sir, I was praying last night." I was praying last night, and God said, this money that I kept, that I want to use for something, God said, I should come and give you. As he left, I was just looking up. Serve God in your private. I don't need to be mentioning what you do in your private, but you just serve God. Lay that foundation. No matter how you stretch your hand, if God does not lift your hand, you see the man where you are. So what's number one again? David served God so well to the point that God had to mention his name before Samuel, his prophet. Let's look at number two. Number two. They will see shows the scripture. In 1 Samuel 16, 10 to 13, write it down. When David was found, he was found at his duty post. When David was found, he was found at his duty post. Listen, make working hard your habit. Sherry, ma fi share sherry, eni ti olonu ba ma gbe soke, ko ma ye ko jo le, olonu ki gbe o le ga, olonu ki ifo go for le. Ele ta wa yoba man so, olu wa ti go go for le mi, o ti go go for le mi, olonu ki go go for le o. And to bamba won kori yen ba ban la ero o le Olorun ki gogo fole Cheri akan man soro pe o gogo fole mi lati fi yen fo Olorun ni Hello look at this look at this First Samuel chapter 16 let's look at from 10 to verse 13 10 to 13 10 to 13 put it on screen Anyone that God will lift up must be somebody that appreciates hard work Take hard working as a habit. Look at this. Thus, Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen this. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are all the young men here? Then he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And there he is where? Where? Keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, 
send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. Where did they find him? They found him keeping the ship. Now, let's read on. you see whether they met him there. Verse 12. We'll stop at 13. So he went and brought him from where? Keeping the sheep. Now he was ruddy and br with bright eyes, good looking. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him. Who will God anoint? Who will have a secure future? Anyone that loves, that takes walking as a habit. Cherry or joy, what do you need to back? Fernand, shake it any ti o fe na se ko lojo waju tin ba da gbogbo ororo aye sori yin te ba fe na se mo tan yin ni 1 million times 0 is what answer me now i know you don't love this but i have to tell you let god find you in your place of work god does not use lazy hands god does not use lazy hearts god uses people that cherish their work ah I want you on fish, They are the people that God will lift to the next level. Those that can say, yes, my future is secure. Praise God, somebody. I say, praise God, somebody. Where did they find David? Even when the prophet was coming, they didn't invite him. You know why they didn't invite him? They know that that boy will be somewhere in the forest. He must be where he's working. Work is not a curse. Isheki, Ishegun. That you work does not mean that God does not have a plan for you. Some people will be singing. People will be singing. You know those days when uh, that group, I want to remember, is it Plantation Boys when they were still together? Before they split it. They say, I want to come. Why she Amy, why ye? Why go? And people will be dancing. Ah, Amy, she share Lauren. But why go? Why ye? Go sing. Conto Joe. Even when Jesus was talking to the Pharisee, he said, Up to now. Up till now, even my family father walk it. Your neighbor, say neighbor. Take work serious. If you do not cultivate work attitude, hear me. You are not securing your future. If you do not cultivate work attitude, you are not securing your future, oh child of God. Now, if you go through the life of David, I will show you. Show me 1 Samuel chapter 16 from verse 18 to 19. David had five skills. How many? Five. Now, those five skills, each of those five skills was gateway for him to get wealth. Now, imagine at his old age, he, was, he had wealth, riches, and honor. Now, let's look at David. Therefore, Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, send me your son David, who is with the sheep. Now, what is his first job? First skill, he was a shepherd. Write it down. Number one, David was a shepherd. Number two, show me next verse, next verse, next verse, next verse. Some people are already yawning. Don't yawn. Open your eyes. If you feel like yawning, stand up. Move around. Sit down again. It's a class. It's a school. And it must be well with you. Show me 21, 21. Are we taking 19? We have not taken 19 now. Therefore, Saul said, okay, show me 20. No, no, no. Go back to 18. 18. We omitted 18. We didn't read 18. 18. 18. 18. And carry them, pen, Jesus. Ah. Chapter 16, Lan, cannot 17. 1 Samuel 16, 18 to 19. Uh -huh. Then one of the servants answered and said, Look, I have seen a son, a son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, who is skillful in what? Playing. Now, don't forget, what was his number one skill? He was a shepherd. Number two, he was an instrumentalist. Now, let's go on. A mighty man of war. Number three, he was a fighter, a man who was ready to for war. You have war you want to fight, employ David, he will, he will attend to you. Now, let's move on. Number four, prudent in speech. He was a presenter. A, a person that is prudent in speech is somebody who has the ability to present. 
That's the people that speak on radio. Somebody like EOB. Somebody like, uh, you know all those people, I don't want to advertise them. So, when it comes to speaking, oh, wow, they said this guy has prudence when it comes to speaking. And number four, the Bible says, a, and a handsome person. He was a model. Now, and look at these five skills that David had. If you go through scriptures, look at the life of David. Which one first brought him to limelight? Which one? Instrument. Don't forget, he was a shepherd. But when they needed an instrumentalist in the palace, thank God he had developed that skill. And when they needed an instrumentalist in are you getting what I'm saying? Because they are not, they are not getting it right. They are misplay, they are misarranging it. They are misarranging it. It was the instrumental aspect of his skill that first brought him to limelight. He got a job in the palace to come and be playing the instrument. And while David was in the palace, that was what he faced. That's why Saul didn't know him. Because many years ago, eh, I didn't understand that scripture. I used to think that the Bible is confused. Because in chapter 17, when he was going against uh, uh, Goliath, uh, Saul had to ask, whose son is it? Until I was listening to uh, the conference that Bishop Oedeko just concluded for ministers. I couldn't travel for, for, the, uh, for, the, for the conference, but I watched it live. So while I was watching, Bishop Oedeko said he was moving in the premises of the church. And he saw some people in the office. And he said, who are you? Uh, those ones said, we've been working there for the past two years. I said, wow, that's good. He said, I don't know them. I don't even know our staff. Now, it was then I discovered that you can have staff that you don't know. God's power will get there. Yeah. 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 See, God's power. The staff, that man has over 45 thousand people collecting salary. My mentor was sharing with us about that of Pastor Adebo. See, Pastor Adebo will check in sign, check Monsi, woman stamp me. Cha, 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 ba, 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 You will get there. Eh? When you call some word there, oh, first song. Oh, but you shout me, I will get there. Berembi, con. What you want there to go? You start practicing from somewhere. Do you know where I started to practice paying salary? 23 years ago, when our church started, I demanded that I needed a secretary. I was paying the secretary 700 naira per month. Later, we increased it to 1,500. My first secretary was Brother Joshua Aiboka. Then after he left, my second secretary was Sister Moji Adedayo. We started paying salary. It was not easy. One five. Every month. Go easy. In fact, you know, if you have understanding that you are paying salary, you'll be serious. You wake up around 11 a.m. You stray. Ah. 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 You now carry your phone. You begin to watch Facebook. You don't have anybody you are paying salary. As at present... The people we pay, I and my wife, we pay 23 people every month as at present. And we are still trusting God for more. So even if I want to sleep, 20, the, the head, only I want 23, the head of those 23 people will not allow me to sleep. Because you can't tell them story at the end of the month. Am I communicating? So, we have left the message open. Back to what we were saying. I only had to branch because some of you are not preparing yourself for the future. You are still struggling over vigilante fee. Struggling. You are the only one owing NEPA bill. Do you know how many places we are paying NEPA bill? We are paying NEPA bill eh, in eight different locations. Eight different locations. Every month. 
and go and find out. We don't owe one error. Because one of the things I keep praying, Lord, make me an employer of labor. If you have people you are paying salary to, you won't die young. The destiny of those people will not allow you to die. Because you are a source of, to their joy. Let's leave that one. Let's leave that one. Let's come back. So, what we, what we say, Saul didn't know David. Because he was an instrumental. He would only play whenever Saul was insane. Not when was he was in right senses. Number one. Then, his second skill came up. When they needed somebody to kill Goliath. Uh-uh. I can do it. Somebody said, well, well, who told you you can do it? He said, I remember. How do I know that I'm a man of war? When I was taking care of the sheep, which happens to be one of my job, the lion came out to attack me, to attack the sheep. I attacked the lion. The lion took the sheep and, and ran. As fast as the lion, I chased the lion. I took the sheep from the mouth of the lion and I killed the lion. Eh. He said, number two, a bear came. You know, bear used to stand like human being. He said, I fought with the bear. I killed the bear. If I could do that, who is this man? And they said, okay, let's see whether he will try. He had gone, 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 blue, saw the prominent person. He now faced Goliath and killed Goliath, which is second skill, a man of war. Can you see that? If you are praying and you don't have anything you are doing, it's like you are saying, oh, God, give me food, but you don't have plates. What do you do? David got up. He killed Goliath. And the Bible says instantly, Saul said, this young man, go and tell his father, look for his father for me, and tell his father, he's not returning home. He's not going to return home. This young man will work with me. Don't see work as a curse. Don't see work as a curse. I come again, don't see work as a curse. Now, God forbid, eh? God forbid. If God should take Bishop David to Edekbo now, look at the number of people that will be crying. Not crying because he's dead. Crying because their source of survivor in the nation is gone. Tap your neighbor. Say, secure your future. I didn't hear you. You can do it better. Shout it aloud. So David had the understanding, hear me. David had the understanding that wealth is to pass through work to both reach and stay with man. Let me put it in a way you understand. Wealth cannot reach you or stay with you if you don't understand the principle of work. That's why if you are praying, oh, do a for me, me, dollar, 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 dollar. Dollar, dollar. Work. So David had that understanding that for wealth to reach man and for wealth to stay with man, man must have a working attitude. Listen, I will quickly share this testimony, or it's not a testimony, this experience. I will share it in such a way that most of you will not understand. One of us, many years ago, uh, through, uh, will I call it gambling, lottery, or whatsoever, he won a cash sum of 10 million naira. I was part of those that celebrated him. Ah, we celebrated that 10 million like. Like, ah, this money. But it was from him I discovered that, see, any amount of um, money you do not grow up to will not stay with you. You don't understand. You know what it means to grow up to? I think I'll be 40, 40, can you imagine? Where's my wife? 46. Yeah, thank you. I'll be 46 this year. I don't used to remember. God should just help me. Now, I grew up to 46. I didn't jump to it. I, I stepped on several years to get there. If somebody dash you 10 million naira now, 
you will waste it. Because you have not done business to catch one million, to move to two million, to move to three million, to move to four million, to stay there, to move up, to stay there, to move up. That's what it means to grow to. If you fly to, you fly out. I was close to those people. They did reasonable things with the money. But they didn't do things that could multiply because they didn't grow to that point. That was when I discovered that you cannot become wealthy and stay. No, you can become wealthy by lottery or gambling. But you can't stay wealthy by it. In only 30 could make 10 million. You can make gamble and make 10 million. You can't stay there by gambling. Go and find out. People that have been used to gambling will say, ah, ah I hit it one time, but since they have not hit it again. The people that are doing the gambling too, they know be mumuna business people then they. And you know, if you hit some amount of money, suddenly, boom, you'll be acquiring some things that you think fit you. Why? You didn't grow to it. At this age of 46, there are some things about life I've come to discover is not necessary. Before I got to this age, if I have some things, there are some things I would have wasted it on. But at this age, I've come to discover so many things about life that is not necessary. That man used to think he needs. At this age, I've discovered that it is not, I don't need a very big house. Because I've discovered that eventually I am yet to see a reasonable child that comes back to live in his father's house. Go and find out. Prosperous children don't return to live in their father's house. They will call it outdated. Am I communicating? So, there's some money you hit now. If you, don't, if you are not wise, you say, build me a 10, a ten bedroom duplex. Outdated. Am I communicating? That's why I understand. You see, from that family I learned, as our church is now, we grew our finance. Eh? From one level to another level, from one level to another level. If I, even the membership, there are some crowd. If they, if suddenly the church become, let me just say, suddenly we become five hundred, I will misbehave. But over the years, eh, I have learned the importance of people. Over the years, I've learned the importance of how to present my words. But Timba did deal, Chichi, Mama, okay, I don't need you. Get out. We still have 499. Tell me about it. Get out. At the 498. And now I understand that, see, one member eh, that you see may have 100 people attached to him. If he leaves, 100 people may follow him. That was David, what David knew that made him to be walking. So many people don't know now. You can't stay wealthy when you are sitting on gambling or dubious business. Tell your neighbor, work. Are you here with me? Let's go on. Let's go on. H, now, I've told you all the uh, work that David had with five skills. Understand that you cannot secure your future, like I said, by gambling and dubious means. David loved his work. David loved his work. David loved his love your work. Get a legitimate work that you will love. Let me tell you one more because of this time. Let me leave number three. Now, let's go to number three. 
We continue next week. Number three, from 1 Samuel chapter 17, 15 to 20, write it down and put on screen for me. David understood that true success can never be reached in one day. 1 Samuel 17, 15 to 20, he, he had that understanding that you don't become wealthy overnight. It's not the day you start the business that the business will get to the, to the peak. Now let's look at the scripture. But David occasionally went and returned from where? From Saul. Who was he to Saul as at that time? He was an instrumentalist. Playing instrument. He was working in the presidential villa. And don't forget that at, and in chapter 16, he was already on anointed to be king. The prophet have anointed him. You are the next king of Israel. He didn't say, okay, I've received the anointing. Yes, now I'm king. No, he's not. He is to be a king. That prophecy is for the future. For you to get to that future, you should understand it requires time. So occasionally, he will come back to his father's house and begin to feed the sheep. He, did, he was not proud because he had the anointing on his head. So many people are proud because of prophecy. Prophecies comes up quick. We were great. To hear, oh, I felt she shame Ah, oh. And your man cut him as okay. Ah, Arati Obade da. Obade Arambada. Ani ah, ah. And it's one day so cool, my Ganiyo. To the quick ni. Ogba, Ogba prophecy. One anointing. Who has she shame? Can look Ogba anointing or bat Ogba? Who could he be Papa to think told you? I went wrong way. Because he knew that no prophecy fulfills overnight. It takes time. Let's read it. Let it. We stop at 20. Fast, fast, fast. I don't have time. 16. 16. 16. I'm waiting. And the Philistines drew near and presented himself 40 days, morning and evening. That's when Goliath came and was making noise and things like that. There's no time. We can leave that one. And was making noise. The next thing I wanted us to see because of, okay, let's read on 17. 17. 17. Then Jesus said to his son, David, take now to, for your brothers an ephah of the dried grain and ten loaves and run to your brothers at the camp. David didn't say he was still waiting. Yes, he has the anointing of a king, but he was not yet a king. He needed to wait for it. So he didn't leave the job of a shepherd. He didn't leave rendering service to his father. Don't leave your tomorrow now. There's a life for tomorrow. There's a life for today. If your tomorrow have not come, live now, like now. Let's finish it. Then Jesus, okay, you got this 18, 18. Move fast, move fast, move fast. I don't have time. And carry these 10 cheeses to the captain of their thousands and see how your brothers fare and bring back news of them. 19. Now Saul and they, all of the men of Israel, were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. And verse 20, where you stop? Fast, 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 fast. So David arose. You see, early in the morning, he didn't say, Daddy, me. He said, 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 Daddy, me. When I was very young, I had one message from an Islamic cleric. cleric. Wasi, let no afar. I have not forgot that message today. The afar was saying it. Ah, again, Santo Kanfuni. Let me say it in Yoruba language. If you don't understand Yoruba, Holy Spirit will interpret to you. Again, Santo Lemeta. I want to let him let him know. One thing I want to let Yawo <laughs> Do ba tete ba dia ah o wun yawo mi ola o wun yawo mi ma ngoi o ma nkorin ah o ti nbo je n sare lo we won lo wa ni balu e lowo ni won gbe yawo koja wa julie o lo lorun gbadua re oni tori pe kini 
eti e gbore o lo re keji bi to ngbe ohun so ruko are ni oluwa je nrire o lo nti e o ba do si waju le ah emi no ni mura o ko ju mari bi gbogbo ara logun e o ma je kan de waju le mi bayi ti mo ri pe won ti de waju le ni to wole lo mura no ba gbe yawo de lo to no ba njo no njo no njo lo ba ah se yawo won ni be ni lo ba wo balu e ibi to tin we lowo ni won ti gbe yawo koja serious oni so long o dan wa dure oluwa da o oloju e rire oni sugbon o re keta oluwa je re mi o te mi lowo iyen ti we o ti mura o ti joko sita mi n gba gbe message yen wa si ni o bo over 24 years ago ni mo ti gbo illustration yen ko ko lo kan mi when god gives you a promise like i said when we started you work the promise and when you are working the promise the promise will require time that's why while david was waiting he was doing the things he was supposed to be doing some of you are not doing anything you are just waiting I'm not doing anything. You are just waiting. Because you know, yesterday I was discussing with one of my children, one of my daughters, and she said, "Daddy, I will not do that thing again. I will wait for Jesus to come." I said, "Eniola." They told us when we are small that Jesus is coming. Thank God I didn't wait. I'm waiting for him, and I'm still doing on. I said, "Eniola, why you are waiting for his coming? Continue studying. Don't stop. He may not come until you finish. And if he come, thank God." Show him that you have gotten to 300 level, 200 level. Praise the Lord. Now let's go on. Let's go on. Are you here? Listen. He understood the importance of patience. A man who already carried the anointing of kingship upon his head and a good job in the palace still returned to the of the sheep. This generation, hear me is that they are so ready, sorry, they are not ready to follow the process that, lead, so that, that leads to the success that God has laid down for them. That's the problem of this generation. Are ah, ready at it, the process. We just want to arrive overnight. We just want to arrive. We just want to arrive. Please don't just, over, don't, don't, don't just arrive. There's a process to where God is taking you. And that process requires waiting. There is nothing good that does not require waiting. So many false prophets. Imagine anointing oil. Tonta ni four hundred naira, four hundred naira konanta. In your kanwa ni kuwa gba anointing oil. Igo kong kote ni pe igo kong kong bigo ani ani kuwa gba forty thousand kule babi mo. You wanna have my lo ah. Pastor, I think we are at So yeah, thirty days. No think we No think we are Ah, we are not going to Forty, forty thousand. You want me? You know, I've handled so many counselings. When I hear the way they dupe people, I'm touched. And do you know why? People are not ready to wait. Look at what David said in Psalm forty, verse one. Look at his testimony. Show us on screen. Psalm forty and verse one. Psalm 40 and verse 1. Legadaba Sendayara. I wish that I'm waiting for you. Let's read together after the count of three. One, two, and what? Three. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. There is no promise of God that does not require waiting. Young men, wait. You are a student. Face your academics. I am not expecting a student to come and give me financial gift for birthday. If you are a student, don't call. if you bring gift, I will ask you a question. Ubunotili. Iwatombo to have him aboyon. That's why you two sister, you are dating a student. You are now expecting financial gift from him. If a student is giving you money, he will eventually use you for Rishwa. Imagine. He's in 200 level. 
studying uh, uh, engineering, you are 100 level, and you are not even supposed to have a relationship at that age. But let's say you even made the mistake to have that relationship, and it's now buying a bought phone for you. Phone of 70,000, student. You now ask him, how come? How you say, well, we are, we are doing internet business. I was asking one of my daughters, he was to own Tasho, the internet. I thought, don't to own Tasho, he only gained to Tiri. I want to learn on short day. Only one five. <laughs> For one year. That's why I see. Even the same some of you that are wives. Umo salary okoe. Umo yetongba. E just son lale. Teti yoshi calculation salary ye. Oti kole ye kungwe wa temara. Rice temara. E wa temara. E ishu temara. Gari temara. Eh? Kile tu manra. Ile wa mo wa sofun kwe. To ba wo earring kon. Lo church in your Sunday. Wala ma shele. Ibu lufe kutiri. He won't know Luma Pada Lubei. Yes. When the pressure is so much, it will get to a point. You are the one that will pressurize him to people that will go and ask. Or about the ancient city, how are you doing your own? You say, ah, there's one Baba. And when the Baba say, mention who he love, if you just mention your name, money will be falling. Be patient. There is a waiting time in everything God wants to do. I read church history. David was anointed by Samuel when he was 17 years old. He didn't become king until when he was 30. How many years? He waited for 13 years. I was listening to Pastor Paul in Ninche sometimes uh, five months ago. He said the journey between uh, 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 Elijah and Elisha. He was sharing his experience, his relationship with Bishop Oedeku. He said, when Elijah said to Elisha, if you see me, what do you want from me? He said, I want the man to. Maybe I should close for me because of that. I want the man to. He said, if you see me when I'm going, I will give you the man to. Reverend uh, uh, Paul Inenche said, they did research. They discovered that he followed Elijah for 26 years. 26 years. Two years read like one chapter. I will, if I see you, I will take the mantle. Okay, if you see me, you will take the mantle. And he will say, my father, my father. 26 years. Some of you join us today. You are pastor today. You want to start preaching here. Elisha waited for 26 years. How many people can wait like that? You are offended. Papa will tell that more. 26 years, Elisha will tell you like that. Kotwani, wo, ba, mantu. Elomi nui tile konjuju. You are too much in haste. Oni salari eo she tuwe. To ba konju salari eo to. Koto di ku on konju, on konju. Motu konti jade. A wan, a wan asho konwa. Asho jo waju eni ma wole ni. It's the truth. It's the truth. There's, things are happening now. I pity this generation. You know why? They are not ready to wait. There's nothing bad. There are people that use wig of 350,000, 400,000, 500,000. One of my daughters was sharing that her guy in the place of work, Papa, her salary per month is 400,000. They're in the bank. That oh, get young ba, get lucky. Only but get only get young ba four hundred thousand lushu. Esa to ba lo wig one fifty. Kule malara. You were one ba twenty five thousand. Ma, <laughs> Ora, 
frontal, only frontal. Twenty-five thousand, okay. And you want to you you are earning twenty-five thousand. You now want to wear a wig that the person that is collecting. You don't know that levels are different. That's why you will steal. That's why you will commit a, a, a fornication. That's why the young man that you are supposed to date, for you to build your future together, you will not want to continue. You will be looking for the person that will be buying you shawarma now. That your future will not be guaranteed. I'm, are you following me? Well, I'm closing now. I want you to understand there is a waiting time. And don't deceive yourself. Whatsoever you know you cannot afford now, don't kill yourself over it. Don't kill yourself. Rise up and let's go.